Tall grass prairies and wetlands once dominated the upper Midwest. Forbs, grasses, and prairie potholes that protected soil and water quality were plowed and drained to make way for industry, homes, and modern agriculture. Today, we better understand native habitats' importance to the environment. Everyone loves pollinators, and milkweed is no longer considered a weed. Sally Finzel, owner of Morning Sky Greenery near Morris, started promoting native gardens long before they were popular. We've been putting these together for over 25 years. We've been growing native plants and sending them off into the world every day. Um, and it's, it's very uh, satisfying. Morning Sky draws customers from throughout the region who desire native species whether for a small garden to attract pollinators and butterflies or to stabilize a shoreline. Some have large acreages where they want to restore native prairie or a wooded savanna. There are, are so many different species of different plants. Like if you stand in the middle of a remnant prairie, there can be a hundred different species all in one spot from mosses to low growing flowers to taller grasses and the, there's sort of layers of these plants and they come on at different times and they flower at different times and so that provides nectar and pollen and for beneficial insects and for uh, butterflies. One of the environmental benefits is that they have extremely deep root systems that hold the soil in place. In particular for like shoreline restoration and that kind of thing, the plants that were growing here prior to European settlement were really deeply rooted and so would hold the banks and, and hills in place. Sally displays a poster that shows how deep native plant roots grow. Um, and you can see there are some plants that are tap-rooted. They have very long tap-type roots, roots, and then we have some more fibrous system roots. But see how deep they are. In the particular, this one is really deep. Um, but you can see how that would really hold your shoreline in place. But if you look over here, there is a, this is our, your typical lawn grass. See how small the root system is and how short it is? It doesn't anchor the soil in place at all. And so um, basically, when you have grass going down all the way to, your, to the water, to the lake's edge, it's not really doing a good job. That soil can get pulled away. And so basically, you lose your shoreline. Morning Sky Greenery's growing season starts with collecting seeds from native plants, then giving the seeds a cold, moist treatment in early winter before they are sown out in seed flats in March. There they will grow until they're transplanted mid-season. The Morning Sky facility includes a historic schoolhouse that has been converted to offices where Sally consults with clients on garden and landscape designs. To determine what plants or seeds the plot will require, Sally first looks at available square footage and the location. I'll ask you what kind of uh, sun that you have, the sun exposure and soil type that you have, whether it's heavy clay or very sandy soil or, um, or if it's shaded. Uh, because, you know, we have plants for every situation. There's so many different species, like we grow over 300 different wildflowers and grasses here and actually sh trees, shrubs and vines as well. Uh, and it can be very overwhelming to people. And so that's why people like me can help them choose the plants. Um, so we pick plants out that bloom at different times of the year, pick colors that they might enjoy having as well, and just get a nice group of plants that they can um, enjoy all season long. But we do a lot of shoreline restoration projects and uh, we've done hundreds and hundreds of them. We don't actually do the planting, the, the customer does, and we provide the plants. Uh, so there are so many lakes and ponds and rain gardens and uh, all, all those different kinds of, of planting all across uh, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. And, I'm, and we send them off into other uh, northern states as well. Rain gardens are growing in popularity. 
During a downpour of rain, water can accumulate in the shallow depressions and keep chemicals and pollutants from entering sewer systems and eventually rivers, lakes, and streams. Wetland plants are also important to pollinators, like swamp milkweed, where monarch butterflies will lay their eggs and the caterpillars will hatch and eat the foliage before turning into a chrysalis. Then in a couple weeks, they'll emerge as butterflies. Upland plants, which, like drier feet, attract pheasants and other wildlife. A variety is what was growing here prior to European settlement and um, is great for upland game birds because there's a variety of seeds and a variety of textures and the, you know, it provides a lot of cover for them. You always want to plant grasses with flowers because the grasses are, are the matrix for the flowers and so they hold everything together and keep the flowers upright and um, provide cover and, and, uh, and habitat together. They form this, this network. They all have their own personalities. <laughs> so I've been doing this for 25 years, growing native plants, and a lot of it was trial and error. It really is just a matter of time and learning each species individually, uh, because they really do have their own personalities. Oh, this is, this is made for TV, this spot. 